Hi, my name is Russ Faulkner, and I'm going to be your guide today as we dig into the mortgage life cycle from the lender's point of view. So at the end of this module, you should be able to explain the financier's perspective of the mortgage cycle, identify the, el the key elements of the life cycle process, learn the key decision points of the life cycle, and articulate underwriting at a high level. As we dig into the mortgage process and look at it from the lender's point of view, we have to highlight the two main decision points in the process. The first is the pre-approval process, and the second is the final underwriting decision. So let's look at the overall process for a, uh, a pre-approval and for a loan for the consumer. So first of all, they're going to meet with the loan officer. And the loan officer is then going to explain the process with them so they really understand the process and what they're going through. The loan officer and the buyer will discuss the buyer's situation. So they'll have a discussion about um, their current debt, their current income, any derogatory credit information or marks on their credit report that will be discovered in the process, just to make sure that everybody's kind of on the same page as they're delving into that. So the buyer will then complete a loan application, which includes things like their W-2s, tax returns, income documents, um, a whole myriad of things that will be included in that loan application. Those documents are then verified, and underwriting then processes the pre-approval. Now at that time, um, a pre-approval letter is going to be issued. And this is really, again, a lender commits to lend a potential borrower a, uh, an amount, a fixed loan amount, based on all of the information that they've provided and that all that information has been, been looked at by underwriting. So this pre-approval letter will say something along the lines of, Sally, congratulations, you've been pre-approved for $160,000. Um, your monthly payment will be XYZ, blah, 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 blah. So making sure to get them the information that they need in order to make a common um, decision and, a, and, a, and an informed decision as they're going through the buying cycle. So then what happens is the buyer makes a home offer. So the buyer will work with the real estate agent to make a home offer. Um, then what happens is the contract terms are negotiated, whatnot, and once they're agreed upon, those terms are sent to the loan officer, and the loan officer in underwriting rerun the loan approval with the new information, and then the loan is sent to underwriting, and underwriting reviews and issues and approval, and the loan officer um, prepares docs to send to title at the closing process. Then the buyer signs and funding take pla takes place. So this is really a high level of the approval process um, for a pre-approval as well as a loan approval. Now within the process, one of the key stages um, of the process is underwriting reviews and issues approval. How do they do that? So Underwriting is really a risk management function. So in underwriting, it's the process a lender uses to determine if the risks of offering a mortgage to a borrower under specific situations are acceptable. So making sure that um, they go through the process and the underwriters can, can really balance that borrower against how much money the bank is giving them is the underwriting process and kind of balancing that risk. To help underwriters with the process, most lenders and financial institutions have pretty stringent guidelines that are established to help provide recommendations regarding the risk. So um, most establishments really have clear guidelines when they look at approving or not approving a customer. So many companies look at what I like to call the three C's of um, mortgage underwriting. They look at credit history of the borrower, the borrower's capacity to repay the loan, and what collateral the borrow can, borrower can use if they can't repay the loan. So as we talked about before, the three C's are really the keys to measure borrower risk. And almost every financial services institution uses these three C's to make their mortgage underwriting decisions. Again, they're the credit history of the borrower, the capacity of the borrower to repay the loan, 
and what collateral that borrower has to repay the loan. So the first C is credit history. Now credit history is a review of the borrower's history to see how well they manage their current and prior debts. And it comes from three main bureaus. So really this is um, from the school of thought as, as past behavior will dictate future behavior. So if a person is good with their money in the past, more than likely they're gonna be good with their money in the future and vice versa. So the credit history reports all past credit, all past history on credit cards, loans, collections, tax liens, and many other financial commitments, met or not. It reports derogatory credit history as well as accounts in good standing and reports open and used credit lines. So it's very important to, to, to look at credit history as we um, look at the mortgage underwriting process. And although credit history is taken into account, particularly any negative marks in relation to past mortgages are extremely influential as we start looking at underwriting the mortgage process. The next C is capacity to repay. And this refers to the borrower's ability to repay the loan. The underwriter analyzes the borrowers. So they look at employment. The more stable the position, the less risky it is. So for instance, traditionally self-employed and commissioned income are the most risky forms of employment. Next we look at income and we usually ask for two years of income verification, either W-2s, pay stubs, tax documents, etc. to really show that past history of income. We also look at current debt. So we look at debt to income ratio. So that's all debt divided by income. So the higher the debt to income, the less likely the borrower is to be able to repay that loan. And next we look at assets. So assets are taken into account when looking at capacity. and determines the amount of liquid assets that could be used to repay the loan if employment is interrupted. So this capacity to repay is really the second C in the mortgage underwriting process. The last and final C is collateral. And collateral really refers to the type of property and the value associated with it. Value is determined by an appraisal. If the home needs to be foreclosed on, the bank has to be able to sell the property to recoup its losses. And collateral can be measured by looking at loan to value or LTV ratios. The higher the loan to value ratio, the riskier the loan, meaning that there's less um, equity position in that loan and the bank is giving out more money. Um, the lower the loan to value, the more money the borrower puts it as a down payment, which will decrease the risk. So collateral is the third C in the mortgage underwriting process. So thanks for watching this module on the mortgage life cycle from the lender's point of view.